So why do you think you'd be the best fit for this position? I have five actuarial exams passed. Yeah, actuarial exams are great, but they're not really going to help you excel in this role. So what do you think makes you a really good fit for this specific role? I've taken a course in Excel. Yeah, that's really helpful too, but we found that actually a lot of our candidates have taken Excel courses. So what will make you a better fit than any of them? I got a 4.0 GPA. Impressive, but the work you're gonna do here is completely different than anything you've probably done in school. Sometimes aspiring actuaries focus on all their big achievements, but forget to emphasize the soft skills that will actually make them stand out to employers. A recent study I did on entry-level actuarial jobs proves that 79% of employers are expecting candidates with some sort of soft skills. And in today's video, you're going to discover what are the top four soft skills that actuarial employers are looking for. There was one specific skill that over 30% of employers were requesting. I'm Bria, an associate of the Society of Actuaries and leader of the Actuary Accelerator community. A month ago, I did a study on 100 entry-level actuarial positions. I went to tons and tons of different job postings online, collected tons of data from each job description to determine for you what entry-level actuarial employers are really looking for in a great candidate. And if you're interested to know all the results about that, I will link to it at the end of this video. So today's video is going to be about the top four soft skills that actuarial employers are wanting in top candidates so that you can go out and purposely build these skills up so that you can talk about them during interviews, you can put them on your resume, and those will help make you stand out to actuarial employers. Okay, let's get into it. Three, two, one. At one time in my actuarial career, I remember having three big tasks on my hand. I had two projects and I was also involved with the month end process. So these two projects involved one of which where we were considering purchasing a block of business or a whole bunch of policies that were already in place. We were considering purchasing that from another company and starting to take on the risks, all the premiums, everything like that ourselves. That's purchasing a block of business. So I was involved in that project and I was also involved in another one where we were streamlining our earnings by source report. Those were two main huge projects that I was a part of in my actuarial career. And we also had our month end process, which was usually take about three days to complete. Results had to be into management by five days after the end of the month. So the projects that I was working on had deadlines. They had timelines already set up. There were meetings already planned. So I had to meet those specific deadlines for the projects. In addition, I had to meet the deadlines associated with my month end reporting. So in this particular situation, it was absolutely necessary for me to prioritize my work. I had to figure out what was the most important things that I had to get done and exactly how I would get them all done so that I met all the timelines and all the deadlines. In addition, I had to get really good at working on multiple multiple projects at the same time. For some people, having so many things going on can be a bit overwhelming, but as an actuary, it's something that you absolutely have to be able to do. According to the study I did, 21% of actuarial employers want someone that is able to prioritize and multitask because in actuarial roles, you're almost always working on multiple things at the same time. At the end of every year, my department was responsible for creating our appointed actuary report. And basically, this is about a 100 page document document that has all our assumptions in it. It's very confidential and it has a lot of information about how we did as a business overall, our claims, our premiums, our costs, all that sort of stuff. It breaks it down into a whole bunch of tables, a whole bunch of data so that regulators and management can really have a good understanding of how our insurance company did over the year. This report was extremely confidential, but since it had so much information in it, it took an extremely long time to get everything together. If I were to to do that by myself, it would have taken probably six or more months and I probably wouldn't have even known how to do everything in that report. And honestly, six months would have been too long. This report had to be done about three to four months after the end of the year. So I really didn't have six months to get it all together. So I had to work with my team in order to make sure that it was done on time and that it was completely accurate. That means that I was responsible for the parts that I had been working on throughout the year, all the areas that involved me, then my team members would update all the areas of the report that involved their specific specialties. Then after myself and my teammates have gotten all this information together, the book finalized, our managers would go through the book to review it for any errors, 
they check for completeness, all that sort of stuff. So basically this appointed actuary report was a huge team effort. It involved our whole department and it took many months to complete. Teamwork is something that you'll often be involved in when you get into an actuarial position. And in my study of entry level actuarial positions, 23% of employers said that they wanted someone that was able to work in a team environment. That shows you how important this really is. Okay, at one company I worked for, we often used a program called GGY Axis. Basically, this is a modeling software that allows us to put in a whole bunch of different actuarial tables. We could put in our actuarial assumptions. We could even put in real policyholder data if we wanted to. And with all that information, it would allow us to estimate our future claims, our future costs, our future premiums that we could expect to come into the insurance company. Well, there was one project I worked on, the one where we were considering purchasing a block of business, where I had to do some really creative thinking. So basically the policies that have already been sold by the company that we were considering buying the business from, well, the policies were a bit different than GGY Axis was designed to handle. So I had to come up with a workaround solution so that we could put those policies into GGY Axis and get accurate results. Now, if you don't completely understand what I mean here, that's okay. What I'm really trying to show here is that problem solving is a really important part of actuarial jobs. This is just one time where I used my problem solving skills, but I assure you there were many, 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 many times where I had to solve problems, think outside the box, think creatively. And that was one of the parts I loved about being an actuary. In my study of entry level actuarial positions, 29% of employers wanted someone that had excellent problem solving skills. So this is definitely one you want to emphasize and talk about during your interviews. Now let's go back to that project I talked about where we were considering purchasing a block of business. Well, the company that we were considering buying the business from gave us lots and lots of data so that we could assess things like the risk, the benefits of taking on this block of business. And in looking at the data, my manager started to see things that really looked odd, things that were red flags in the data. He kept digging further into it and actually realized that there might be signs of fraudulent activity in these transactions. And for insurance companies, insurance fraud and money laundering are huge problems and they're things that we really have to watch for as actuaries. But with my manager's keen analytical skills, he was able to see these signs and we were able to address the issue. Great actuaries often have amazing analytical skills. And 31% of the entry level actuarial job postings that I looked at requested someone with analytical skills. That's almost one third of actuarial employers wanting someone with these skills. Okay, so we talked about multitasking, we talked about teamwork, we talked about problem solving, we talked about analytical skills. Now, if you already have any one of these four skills, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments which one you are already really good at. And if there's one that you feel you need to work on, let me know that too. I'd really love to hear that. Now, after hearing these four soft skills that employers are really looking for, I'm sure it comes to mind like, how do you actually prove these to employers? How do you show them that you actually have these skills? Well, the answer is in a stepping stone position. Now, you've probably heard me talk about these before. Basically, a stepping stone position is a job where you will gain the skills and qualifications that actuarial employers are looking for. So if you go out and get a stepping stone job, it's almost inevitable that you're probably going to gain some of these soft skills. I learned a lot of these skills while I was working in positions like a bookkeeper at my dad's welding business, in my accounting internship at an envelope company, and in my database management position at an insurance company. So make sure you do actually work on improving these skills and most importantly, make sure you emphasize them on your resume and during interviews, especially if the job posting states any one of them. Now there are lots of soft skills out there. Actually there were 12 in this entry level actuarial job study that I did that kept on coming over and over and over and over again. And these that I shared with you are the top four. So most likely these are the ones that matter most to entry level actuarial employers. So I highly recommend you emphasize these and really take time to develop those skills. So soft skills are just a small part of becoming an amazing actuarial candidate. If you want to learn the main findings of my 100 entry level actuarial job study, then make sure you go check out this video right here. I will leave a link to that in the description as well. It really goes in depth about how you can stand out to actuarial employers. And honestly, it could 100% change how you approach getting your first actuarial job. So don't skip it, go watch it now, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.